EVO Japan 2020 just concluded, giving us a glimpse of what the early meta for Street Fighter could be like, and a breakout star that other top players should look out for. Here's a quick recap of what went down. Starting off, we have a match between Momochi and Knuckledoo, two players known for bringing out multiple characters in any given match. Momochi winning the first round of Game 1 with Poison's exceptional range felt a little more confident in pressuring Knuckledoo entering the second round. Though Momochi did gain a big life lead 11 seconds in the round, Nuffledoo would answer back to bring down Momochi's life lead, evening it out. Combo, and then goes for the meaty, but Nuffledoo was in the air, so he's not gonna get the full combo. Here comes Nuffledoo. Yeah, big combo from counter and wheel kick. Gonna take the pressure, as you often do, mid-screen, especially with G. Yeah, especially against someone like Poison, you wanna keep going. Here's the command throw. Gonna be with the clock winding down, being at a slight life disadvantage, Nuffledoo tried to press the attack by jumping in, only to be caught by Poison's crouching medium push, further increasing the disadvantage. And with 14 seconds left, Momochi would take game one with a surprise EX overhead. Yeah, like right there, you can punish that with the X rush or punish. And one of the nice things about that, you know, poison crouching medium punch works so well as an anti air, even against G's little, you know, body splash, For which sure. has caused so many people problems. Time is ticking. Knuckle do with the empty jump there, with maybe looking for the crouching medium punch. And the air, the EX yeah, overhead! There it is! With Knuckle Do's G having a difficult time with Poison's keep out game, he switches to Armeek in the second game, which proved to be quite successful, able to pressure with her more effectively. Knuckle Do would take round one. In the second round, though, Momochi looked to have controlled the distance game once again, gaining significant life lead while keeping Armeek out in the earlier part of the round. With the cross up? Oh, oh no, cancel. missed the cancel. Interesting. Not an error that you see often here, and again, yeah, doesn't want to deal with the mix-up. Poison vacuuming you in, getting plus two on that. With almost zero life left, Momochi seemed to even out the rounds, only to be caught by Nuffledoo's jumping attack and carrying his poison to the court, her poison's fear reversal would get baited out, bringing down her life even further with another jump-in combo into critical arc from Nuffledoo. Feeling a little desperate, Momochi tried to chip kill Armika the moment Poison woke up, only for a critical arc to whiff as Armika would jump over her and finish the round giving game two to Nuffledoo. Trying to call in the dash, go on reaction maybe, like a crunchy heavy right. but, Oh, here we go. Well, he's gonna actually get the mix up here. And now, he's one- He's in danger of chip though, one the jump over. Hit. Oh, he's gonna go for it. He's gonna, this is gonna kill? Oh, is no. this going to kill? Not no. enough. And you have to watch the critical arc chip. Yeah, jumped over. He made it over, he made it over. Entering the final round, Momochi would take the first round by fighting Nuffledoo's army a little more up close. In the second round, though both players started off quite even, Momochi would gain the advantage with the long-range confirmed critical arc, leaving Armika with around a quarter of her life. But with one slide cancelled into V-Trigger, Nuffledoo would catch Poison with a crouching light kick, comboed into Nadeshko, extending the combo to carry Poison all the way to the corner. Nuffledoo would keep up the pressure, stunning Poison, finishing her to even out the rounds. But look at this, Knuckle who's sitting on full resources now. Yeah, I worry about spending that meter early because, you know, now you have nothing as poison. Mm -hmm. So basically all you need is just one good hit and then a V-Trigger activation and critical art can probably do it. Well, no, never mind, he's gonna activate. He's got the hit right here. So now one mix up. Yeah, Momochi's been jumping oh, a lot, so I, luck spent a I like Knuckle do not command throwing yet. Oh, oh missed the confirm what in side? the front. That. Carrying the momentum from the previous round, Nuffledoo would keep pressuring Momochi, bringing Poison to the corner and pinning her down there for almost the entirety of the round. And with another body splash, Nuffledoo would catch Momochi's attempted crouching medium punch to anti-air on Mika, finishing the round with an EX command grab, winning the set, and eliminating Momochi. All right, Everyone corner. walks into it, it's like that Abuki trick, basically. Yeah. The CN. It's very, very, very good to have. Oh, and he's got the crush! Getting the confirm did not spend the critical art though. EX shines with a kill, that's what's so scary. The whip punish the splash. Again, it works again. That should do it actually. He just reset, reset. on it. He's gonna move knuckle do dang on in this loser bracket. So After his win against Momochi, Knuckle Do would further climb up the brackets, going undefeated, taking down Takito's Urian, Crusher's Birdie, and Mr. Crimson's Dalsim along the way. And do ends up in top eight at Evo Japan. Crimson out in ninth. Securing himself a spot at top eight loser side, where he would first face off with another birdie main in Trash Box. Dropping only a single game in their set, Nuffle Blue would eliminate Trash Box to move on to loser's quarter final to face either Mago or Infiltration. But unfortunately, that means Trash Box is out in seventh place. With Nuffle Blue waiting on loser's quarter final to face off against either Mago or Infiltration, the former had to go through Itazan first before earning the winner's semi final match against Infiltration. Going undefeated against Itazan, his win here looks as though it amounted to an evil title already. 
not more. Oh, that's it. You're done. You're done. That's it. No options. As soon as that jump was blocked, yeah. ran out of it. Mago yeah. with the big <laughs> pop off for top He's eight like, winners. Here. Let me shake your hand. Just like that. Sticks out the handshake. It's oh, a good, it? good game. It's good game. With Mago's win against Itazan, he would now move on to top 8 winner's semi-final to face off against Infiltration, the former EVO Japan Street Fighter V champion. But with Mago's cami, he would just small Infiltration's Minot, closing in with ease, finishing both rounds in an average of 33 seconds, taking game 1. Acro again, that kind of damage adds up, you know. Hmm. Looking low. One thing about this matchup too is you'll see Mago try to whip punish the button with drills. Ooh. Oh my, the jump in. <laughs> You know, that this is the way you fight Manat. You keep jumping a lot of the times, and that's what Mago is doing. That's, oh, that could have been it. Not the kill, but that's the meaty anyway. The cancel <laughs> doesn't need it. Matter. Infiltration realizing that the Minot versus Kami matchup was too unfavorable for him, he went with Colleen in game 2 with the plan to outfit Kami and utilize her parry to gain the advantage. Initially, the pick worked quite well, winning him the first round, but with Mago's persistent oppression, the next two rounds would be won with his Kami, putting Mago in a two game lead. For activation on the block, I should say. Went for the empty jump, trying to bait the counter probably. And Mago playing this slow, knows, you know, one hit is all it takes. Info's in the same position right now. One hit into critical art can do it. Ooh. That's scary to do. Uh, uppercut. Oh, okay. Spike kick. Uppercut. Yes. Now only one game away from being sent to the loser's bracket, Infiltration opted for a comfort pick and jury. Though the first round went back and forth, answering Mago's pressure with his own, Mago would still win out in the end and continue to do so in the next round. Overrunning Infiltration's jury with Kami's constant pressure, Mago would win the set to move on to winner's final, and send Infiltration to where Knuckle Dude is waiting. Wow. Wasn't yeah, out of whip OS range. Here we go, V-Trigger 1 activated, yep, safe on block. In! Yeah, looking for more and more pressure here. Mago, one block will build a oh. V-Trigger as well. Yeah. Uppercut, yep. He's gonna spend it. Two throws, potentially. Well, there's one. One more throw. Doesn't quick rise. Ooh, does the V-Skill. Wow. Yeah, Mago has, uh, has a V-Trigger. raid on the fireball release. If that's what Mago was trying to go for, then big brain Mago. Now sent to loser side, Infiltration would now have to go against Snuffledoo, where both players face the threat of elimination. With both players having one round apiece, Infiltration would barely take game one, almost losing it if it wasn't for G's second spin kick, not clipping jury. Back catch! Back catch the throw, raw activation, yeah! You have to watch, if he tries to throw a fireball, Infiltration could EX uh, flip right through it. Building up all those Fuhajins. Yeah, throwing them on the floor so he can't rush what? punch, but that's exactly what he does. Wow, the second hit missed. Going in game two, again with both players winning a round where each round went to the wire, the final round would tell a completely different tale. With a single mistake from Infiltration, throwing out a very punishable standing heavy kick, Nakhaldu would carry his jury all the way to the corner, not giving Infiltration the chance to strike back, winning the second game with a perfect. Hard and Infiltration was looking pretty solid, not the punish. So I think Nakhaldu maybe got to settle a bit here. Yeah, like you said, Infiltration kind of had that kill situation. Yeah, it's really the mistake of Infiltration. Why not do? Live in this game, the crush. Yep, the juggle, the stun. Not enough meter for a critical art combo here, so how does he do this? A reset, that's the kill probably. Yeah, the what? last You didn't hit. even need to spend any meter. Despite Infiltration gaining the reputation of selecting very unexpected characters in clutch moments, this time around he chose to stick it out with Jury. With Nuffledu already quite comfortable with the matchup, he would win the final two rounds to take the set, eliminate Infiltration, and move on to face Sako in loser semi-final. Heavy kick as well. Oh, activation, that's gonna be a combo, and he's sitting on all that meter! Doesn't even need it at all! Yeah, could have cancelled it and said, nah, not even worth the trouble. The precursor to Mr. Crimson's elimination, Sako had to go through the Dalsim main first before facing Naoman in top 8 in the semi final. Though Sako is undoubtedly one of, if not the best Kalge users around right now, a character who people have been debating whether he is the best Shoto or not. Having to face a Dalsim, he instead chose Minot. With both characters playing a very similar game plan, Sako's Minot would come out ahead because of her higher damage output thanks to her V Trigger 1, winning 2 rounds straight and taking game 1. Bit. That's a great tech. Wow, look at this buttons from Crimson Oggy oh, already. Gets harvested by the overhead. And there's the stun. Oh, 
sends the all bow. It's close. They'd suck on for the bit no! of oh! We all okay. got baited. We all got baited. Yeah, oh yeah. Most of game 2 was pretty much what you'd expect from a Minot Dawson matchup, a battle from a distance, relying on each character's pokes to slowly chip away their opponent's life. Unfortunately for Dawson, having a hurt box attached to his limbs would put him in a disadvantage. Sokka able to stack additional damage no matter how small it may have been whenever Crimson would whiff, and with this, Sokka would close out the game and move on to face Naumon in top 8 winner semi-final. Oh, slow. Yeah, probably not the intended punish. Now it 11! Oh! oh! Tried to check. I don't know if it was the uh, lag hit. Tried to check the drill. Already in a two-game lead, Sokka was just one win away in sending Naumon to the loser's bracket. Fortunately for Naumon, he was able to take a round in Game 3, now able to get up close to Minot where he couldn't in the previous games. But entering the second round of Game 3, Sokka looked to control the flow of the round once again, keeping Naumon away. Get in a lot, right? So I was hoping to see a little bit more of it. In this round, he's been doing it quite a bit. He's gone for a couple, of Sokka just stuck the first one. It might have just been one of those things he told himself between the game, wait, I need to do this more yet, and see those raw toxins right there. Yeah, and I like the heavy top two from far away, too, to try to get in. B-skill, and two. Yep, had it already, already saw the startup of that B-skill. As Naumon desperately tried to close their gap by double dashing forward, his attempted throw right after would whiff and Sokka didn't let this chance slip away, immediately punishing him and just barely finishing off Sakura, leaving just a pixel of her life. And with one crouching jab as Naumon tried to get in again, Sokka would finish the round, putting himself just one round win away from moving on to winner's final. Bigger than he get, I don't think. Yeah, especially the way Sakura leaned forward like that. Sakura leaned forward. Oh, that should oh. be able to do it. No, not enough. It's been the X. B skill, nothing. Oh, hi. Oh, went the fireball. With a very important round on the line, Naman would have to win this to avoid being sent to the loser's bracket and lose the advantage of being in the winner's side. And with this in mind, he would immediately put the pressure on Sako, catching him with the Tango Hadouken and quickly capitalizing on this, carrying Sako to the corner bringing down Minot's life even further. The best! That's that Goken! <laughs> that nice. I'm in a great spot now, this is the kind of pressure you need. But now that Sokka's V-Trigger activated, he'll look to make a comeback, but with Naumon having full resources and death, he aimed to chip away Sokka's remaining life, throwing a fireball to act as a shield as Naumon tries to close the gap once again. But instead, Sokka would eat the fireball because of a last-second decision to try to avoid it. Time for the EX, oh boy. not critical R, and yeah, you see Sokka backing off, knows that chip is still a threat, the V-Skill, oh! oh the last second like, from slide or something, he hasn't got an input come out. With this win in the previous game, Naumon was now more confident confident going into game 4, immediately dashing up and pressuring Minot, putting her to the corner and not letting up to take the first round with the perfect. Entering the second round with the same game plan, Naumon would just rush in immediately towards Sako's Minot, not giving her a chance to play her zoning game. Catching Minot with a crush counter, Naumon would dash up to finish Minot with a critical art to take two games straight, putting Sako and him on equal footing. Reflecting the orb release! Crush! This should be the kill! Super! Is this gonna kill? This should definitely oh, kill! Yeah, absolutely! Ooh. As we tie up two apiece here in our very first match of Top 8. Now on making a comeback win in the previous round of Game 5, he's now poised to take the set and move on to winner's final. Though Sako tried to keep Sakura away from Minot, he would still get caught with the well-timed jumping attack from Naumon. With a follow-up combo from Naumon that would carry Minot to the corner in two straight throws, Naumon would take the second round, close out the set, and secure a spot at top 8 winner's final, sending Sako to the loser's spread. Some of the combo rounds. Oh, again the jumps! EX Tatsu! Uppercut after. Sako, one more guess! Naumon with the back! Oh, moving on to winner's final Sako! In winner's finals of EVO in Japan. Who'd have thought it? He went down 0 and 2. It looked like it was just gonna be a Sako After taking three straight games from Itazon, eliminating him, Sako now moves on to face Nuffledu. Taking down Nuffledu's cam in the previous game, Nuffledu would switch to his guile to counter Sako's Kage, which seemed to have better results, waiting around for himself. In the third round, both players would go quite even, trading blow for blow, but in the last moments of the round, as Sako tried to set up Nuffledu with the demon finish, Nuffledu would wake up with an EX flash kick, completely avoiding Kage's raging demon and putting both players back to neutral, as both moves would take too much time to recover for a quick follow-up. Finally, Nuffledu would take a game for himself by catching Sako's dash with a jump-in combo. Slide down kick, so we back to the demon available. Oh, 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 the heat plastic! Yeah, he got out of there at this! 
meters back. Saho, after getting rushed down and giving Nakhodu a one game lead, was now able to recompose himself in game 4, winning a very close battle in the first round. And with the second round, Saho is now taking control of the game again, slowing down the pace to play Minox's zoning game, something Gao is very capable of but would just simply lose out against the Minox. Saho would take game 4 and have this set be determined with one last game. Orbis check! Every single time it's out like that. Oh, that's rough, yeah. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Though Nokaldu did win a game against Saho's Minot using Guile, the character seems to be not enough for him to win the final game and switches to Armiga instead. Though he almost made a comeback in the first round, Saho closed it out to take a round lead. Sticking to the plan of pressuring Minot, Nokaldu would find more success in the second round, as he was able to easily close in on Minot and take a huge chunk of her life. Where Sako said, you know what, you're gonna try to feign this, so I'm just gonna be patient here. Double dash Brimstone. He got the jump, but he jumps again. Okay, here we go. Brimstone, Sako, match point, regular throw for Knuckle Doom. But even with the large life deficit, Sako would try to fight back now taking the role of the oppressor. Pressuring Armiga with long-ranged attacks, then suddenly closing in with her V-Scale, Saho managed to take down Armiga's life around a fifth of her life bar. But now with Armiga's V-Trigger bar fully stopped, Nokuldu would immediately activate her V-Trigger to take his turn, and finish the round with a command grab. After he blocks this, probably. <laughs> there it is! The Nadeshko's ready! But now the fourth though, look at this, Saho! Yep, gonna use the Nadeshko to get in! Oh, the giant swing! Final game, five! Between these two. Down to the final round in the final game, both players would just exchange blows left and right. Nakhodu opening with a drop kick, flips Minot and follows it up with a combo that would carry Minot to the corner. There he would keep the pressure on. But Saho not backing down from Nakhodu's volley would answer back with a wake up critical art to even it out. Both players would continue this exchange, but unfortunately for Nakhodu, Saho landed more shots than he did. And with one last shimmy, Saho would take the set, eliminate Nakhodu, and move on to loser's final. That's that goes flat! That's a combo! That's a punish! Knuckle Dude's in a bad spot here, actually. Next, it'll kill him. Oh, oh it no! was rough. Zako moving on to losers' finals over Knuckle Dude. Sends him out of the tournament in four planes. Though Mago had used Tammy for most of the entirety of top 8, he now heads into winner's final with a Kareen pick to fend off Naoman Sakura. Both having great mid-range tools and the explosiveness to go along with it, each round would be determined with who gets to successfully confirm their hits first. Unfortunately for Mago, Naoman would come out ahead in the first game. Okay, does not go for the auto media after with a medium hunt. No, wow! How'd you medium punch? I think probably trying to uppercut, the ex uppercut. Yeah, something. That was a interesting execution error right there. Winning two straight rounds again in game two, one of those rounds being imperfect, Naman looks to steamroll his way to the grand final. That's a little delay, let me just confirm. Romago gets to confirm that time, gets the cross up and then a counter hit afterwards, which might have okay. Uh -huh. not and the delay crouching like it now. Goes up 2-0 in winners finals. With how bad Mago lost both games, now Mon would force Mago to switch back to his cami. To Naomon's own detriment though, as Mago would score a first round win. But despite that, Naomon would not lose any of his momentum and would take the remaining rounds to move on to the grand final with the winner side advantage, sending Mago to the losers final. One last time back though, not enough to stun. He wants that one more hit, and then you see Naomon says, No, I'm out of here. And here comes my activation. Big damage on this one all the way to the corner. Oh, that should be the kill. Pazu V skill now in Sakura. Grand finals winner side here at Evo Japan. And this is V skill and V trigger switch to handle that matchup as he moves. One last chance for both these players, but with already a game lead for Mongo, Sako would have to rally himself to avoid the added pressure of being in a two game disadvantage. With that in mind, Sako would take the first round of game two through sheer relentless offense. Mago would answer back to take the next round. Now down to the last round, both players kept up the pressure, enforcing their will on each other, waiting to see just who would buckle first. Started by, uh, by Sako. So good patience out there. Okay! That hurts. Snatch on a roundhouse for the crush. Both the stun already. Adding back throw would be close. Keeping the pressure. Nice throw. Tech drop the dive kick again. Jumps out of there. I love that choice from Mago, but the punish anyway. With both players now slowing the game down, they would carefully pick their moments in striking, wary of both players' potential to finish each other with a single touch. Kami with their high damage output and Minot having a full stop of the X meter. After successfully tech throwing Sako though, Mago would hit confirm a standing medium kick into V-Trigger cancel and finish the round with Kami's DP to take game 2, heading into game 3 with a 2 game lead. Chris almost had the jump timing, 
the EX dive kick would have hit. And right now, Mago probably okay with blocking some of those things, getting very close to the B trigger. He's gonna die to critical art though. If he's not careful, that's not enough. Gotta see a raw activation here, I think. No, so far not. There it is! Overcut's gonna reach! Seeing that Sako trying to match Kami's pressure did more harm than good, switch back to playing his owning game and would take the first round in game 3. Finding success in the previous round, Sako would apply the same strategy in the next round, forcing Mago to make hard reads with Kami's spiral arrow for him to get in, only for it to get blocked and punished. Finally bringing down Kami's life with the help of Minot's speed trigger and with one last throw to finish the round, Sako would take game 3, just one more game away from evening out the game difference. This is a good start here for Mago. Gonna spend the bar this time for the damage. Cause he's gonna get the oh, that should do it right there. He should be able to finish. Oh no! Oh, yeah, he didn't have critical art or anything available, but the throw will kill Sako. Despite Sako keeping to his strategy of fighting from a distance, Mago would still manage to get in and rush him down to take the first round of game 4. Just one more for Mago, Sako desperately needs to win the second round. Switching things up, Sako would now move into mid range where he was close enough to hit Mago with his quicker normal attacks but just far enough that Mago's own attacks couldn't reach him, slowly winning the round to give himself one more shot at evening out the games. This is a Not gonna spend the meter yet? Throw towards the corner. Oh. I've got all these EX sidekicks. Oh, never mind. Yeah, don't spend anything. Just eat that because you're not getting away from the. Oh, oh no! Still a one hit round though. He's got critical art available. Oh, what up for the throw? Yeah, don't get hit by that. Ah. Over and whip. That's what it is. <laughs> oh my. Mago is going to look to buffer it if there's a whip from Sako as well, too. The fourth boss point blank. Mago trying to close out the game to move on to the grand final would quickly go in to pressure Sako once again. And though Sako did inflict almost the same damage to Kami, even gaining a slight life advantage, Mago would catch Minot's toes with a crouching medium kick, immediately cancelling it into Kami's V trigger and finishing her off with a critical arc, eliminating Sako and getting another shot at Naumon in the grand final. Nothing from Sako. Could have been jacked. Oh, we got a miss! Uppercut in the super! Mago is gonna put himself a ticket back in the grand finals to go up against Nauman here at Evo Japan Soccer. With how both players took their previous sets in dominating fashion, going 3-1 and 3-0 entering the grand final, the first win was crucial in setting the pace of the entire match and unfortunately for Mago, Naumon took game 1. Naumon would continue the momentum heading into game 2, winning the first round with a brilliant display of footsies. Mago would give himself some breathing room after taking the second round, relying on Karin's high damage output. In round 3, both players would start off exchanging blows, but it was Mago who would get the advantage after catching Sakura with a standing medium punch, cancelled into V-Trigger, further extending the combo and one more Tick throw to pile up on the damages inflicted on Sakura. And no activation yet, you need the X fireball. All of these players missing some of these confirms right now. Yeah, spend the V trigger is already gone. He might build another one though. It's gonna be some good damage here. Now one more hit in the With both players staying on the ground for quite some time, Naumon tried to jump in thinking that Mago was too focused on the ground game to expect it. But that was exactly what Mago was waiting for, hitting Naumon with Karin's DP leaving Sakura just one pixel away from losing the game and with one more crouching medium kick, Mago would take back the momentum from Naumon with a win of his own. V-Trigger available, Naumon activates, he's got the fireballs, can't throw him raw because of the tickle, but it was too far away, the jump, it has anti air the side, face off the poke, Mago gets the crouch medium kick, he's on the board. Mago would continue this momentum winning the third game, with Naumon barely getting any hits in the second round of game 3. Also taking the first round of game 4 after slugging it out with Naumon Sakura, Mago was just one more round away from resetting the bracket. Perhaps letting the pressure get into his head, Naumon would commit the error of miscalculating Sakura's distance from Karim, having his buffered standing light kick into DP be blocked, leading into a corner carry combo in a bracket reset for Mago. Unfortunate in that situation, no crash medium kick into the confirm. Jump over hits, not the combo. A little late, maybe. Anti-air for Mago is so much more on point. No, too far. Oh, spins one bar. Takes him to the corner here. Throw. Oh, the counter hit. 
can do Dizzy here if he wants. Chooses not to. The cheeky reset from Mongo to reset the bracket. Now Mon taking his time to recompose himself after the bracket reset with great effect would win the first game with the same relentless aggression that won him almost every set in top 8. Now Mon not slowing down at all would keep the pressure on in the first round of game 2. Mago was able to steal the second round though after briefly halting Now Mon's pressure with some key anti-airs, but not letting the stolen round affect him at all. Now Mon would put himself just one game away after scoring perfect over Mago through the same aggression that has carried him and his software all the way to the grand final. Round out that for the fierce into the buffer off that B skill. Oh boy, we're Working on stun real soon, walks up, walks the jab, activation, the anti-air. And he's happy he didn't get the counter hit here. He's Not dead. Done. Nauman is gonna go up 2-0 over Mago. Heading into the first round of Game 3, Mago would try to match Nauman's aggression, and though both players would go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Mago would come out ahead and take the first round. In the second round, still with the same game plan, both players again would just brawl it out, but this time with Nauman taking the round after baiting Kareem's DP in the end. Finally, Nauman just a round away from winning the EVO Japan title would stick to his guns, bringing the same aggression that gave him the greatest tournament run of his career so far. After baiting one last wake-up DP from Mago, Nauman would close out the set and win his first major title. I do it! Oh, the counter hit so has done! He has two bars! Reset I'm here. just gonna spend! No, he just takes the damage. Mago's in trouble, keeps it blocked. Ah, the Nauman is your EVO Japan 2020 Street Fighter 5!